Okay, we are uh, ready to start. So just wanted to make sure um, everyone is able to see the screen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we will continue with the uh, with a couple of topics which are left in chapter seven, um, which is on the properties of expectations. So I'll just give a very quick review um, what we have done so far in chapter seven. Chapter seven so far in the last uh, two lectures or so. So. Um, we have been talking about the properties of expectations and uh, uh, we know how to find the expectation or expected value of a random variable. If it is discrete, you multiply with a PMF and sum over all values of X. If it is continuous, you integrate over all values of X after multiplying the density function with, with X, okay? Um, we had also, um, figured out that uh, expectation is linear expectation is linear in the sense that expected value of x plus y where x and y are two random variables discrete or continuous does not matter is equal to expected value of x plus expected value of y always irrespective of the independent status of x and y if they are dependent, this is still true. If they are independent, this is still true. Okay. So X, X and Y may or may not be independent. This expression will still be true. Okay. We also found that there is a similar expression expression product of x and y well this also turns out to be equal to expected value of expected value of y only if x and y are independent only if x and y are independent by the way if there is a function of x and function of y which are multiplied together this will still be true only if x and y are independent only if x and y if they are not independent if they are not independent or they are dependent, <clears throat> in general, this quantity would be equal to integral over all x, integral over all y, or summation if they are discrete. x and y, this is the joint product of these guys, multiplied by the joint density function of x and y, dx dy, or dy dx. So I've written y later and x earlier, so dy dx will make more sense. Okay. Then um, what else we covered? Just want to make sure that everything important is covered. Then um, we said that if x and y are independent, then this holds true. This guy holds true. Okay. What if they are not independent? Then in that case, uh, what would be the expectation of their, their product? And how do I measure the, the dependence between, measuring dependence between X and Y? Um, one measure of their dependence was covariance between X and Y, which we had defined to be expected value of X minus expected value of X multiplied by y minus expected value of y, okay? Which after simplification was turning out to be expected value of x, y minus expected value of x, expected value of y, okay? And this would be the first term here, expected value of x, y, if x and y are independent, would be expected value of x multiplied by expected value of y. So these two terms will cancel out if they are independent, okay? will be zero if X and Y independent. If X and Y are independent. <clears throat> uh, 
So there were some properties of covariance. One was uh, covariance between x and x would simply be x minus expected value of x and x minus expected value of x, both of those. So this would be equal to expected value of x minus expected value of x whole squared, which we know from previous life is variance of x. It's variance of x. Okay. There is uh, another property of covariance, which was covariance of AX and BY, AX and BY. Uh, this, would, this would turn out to be AB times covariance of X and Y, covariance of X and Y. Then by using the covariance, we also derived the, the formula for the variance of sums variance of sums of random variables variance of sums of random variables okay. so the variance of summation i is equal to one to small n which is a fixed number some number of random variables this was equal to i is equal to one to n variance of x i plus two times double summation for i going from 1 to n, j going from 1 to n, i less than j, i less than j, covariance of x i with x j. Okay. And if x y, x1, x2, etc. are independent or pairwise independent, independent independence is is stronger than pairwise independence okay. so if they are pairwise independence then this term would be equal to zero okay if they are independent then they will definitely be pairwise independent this will term will still be zero okay so so va variance of variance of summation i is equal to one to n x i would be equal to the summation of the variance Variance of sum would be equal to the sum of the variance only if, only if independent. X i x j. If independent x i x j. Now, um, recall that the expected value of the sum was equal to the sum of the expected value irrespective of the independent status. Irrespective of the independent status. Like in variance, jo hai, variance of sum would be equal to the sum of the variance only if x i and x j for all i and j are independent of each other, independent of each other. Okay. So far so good. Okay. Then we defined something which we call the sample mean. So in defining that we said that you have a big population and then from that big population you pick a random sample you pick a random sample or, and do the measurement on that, that sample. So for example, if you are interested in the height, then take the average height of a small sample of people randomly chosen from a big population. Randomly chosen from a big population. And we said that you can define the sample mean, which is a random variable, which is a random variable, by the way, as x bar to be equal to one over n summation i is equal to one to n x i where x i are i i d independent and identically distributed random variables independent and identically distributed random variables okay we can also assume we can also assume that expected value of x i let's say that this is mu because they are identically distributed is every x i will have the same mean will have the same mean and this would be equal to mu which would be the same as the population mean the population mean the population mean and this makes sense this makes sense because you know think about it you have a large population which has an average height if you pick one person randomly okay what would be the expected value of the of the 
height of that person that would be equal to the population mean because that person could be anyone that person could be anyone okay so expected value of of the height of a randomly chosen person would be the same as the population population height okay <clears throat> uh, mean of the population height now um what is what is if the sample mean is a random variable it must have a it must have a distribution it will have a mean it will have a variance okay what is the mean and variance of x bar okay. mean and variance of x bar okay. we saw that the expected value of x bar was turning out to be the same as we so iska matlab hai ki aapne ek random sample pick kiya since there is a large number of samples that you can pick all possible samples agar main pick karu all possible samples let's say you had 220 million population of pakistan and you pick 1000 people theek hai how many groups of 1000 people you can pick 220 million choose 1000 so ye 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 number to solve nahi kar payenge hum You know, this would be a huge number, huge number. वो सारे के सारे जो random groups हैं उनको pick करें, उन सब की height का average निकालें, तो वो जो average आएगा वो population population के average के बराबर आ जाएगा. Okay. So, what would the be the variance of x bar? And we had solved for this. The variance of x bar we saw that would be equal to one over n squared into n times sigma square, which was simply sigma square over n. so while the expected value of the sample mean is the same as the expected value of the uh, is the same as the population mean the variance of x bar the variance of the sample mean was equal to 1 by n of the variance of the population 1 by n of the variance of the population okay so uh, now an intuitive explanation of why this might be true is ke jaise jaise aap n ko badhate jate hain जैसे जैसे n को बढ़ाते जाते हैं वैसे वैसे x बार विच इज द सैंपल मीन उसकी वेरियंस कम होती जाती है कम होती जाती है इफ यू टेक द एंटायर इनफाइनाइट पॉपुलेशन एंटायर इनफाइनाइट पॉपुलेशन सो इसका मतलब है कि आपको जो x बार मिलेगा आपको जो x बार मिलेगा एक ही दफा रैंडम सैंपल पिक किया और उसमें सब के सब लोगों को ले लिया देन यू विल गेट जस्ट एक्यूरेट आंसर वो आपको पूरी पॉपुलेशन का मीन मिल जाएगा एंड यू विल गेट जस्ट वन आंसर विद नो वेरियंस कोई वेरिएंस ही नहीं होगी उसके अंदर ठीक है सो इफ एन टेंड्स टू इंफिनिटी देन द वेरिएंस ऑफ एक्स बार शुड बी शुड बी जीरो एक्स बार विल एक्चुअली कन्वर्ज टू द पॉपुलेशन मीन विल कन्वर्ज टू द पॉपुलेशन मीन ओके नाउ देयर इज वन थिंग दैट वी आल्सो डिफाइंड व्हिच वाज कॉल्ड द सैंपल वेरिएंस सैंपल वेरिएंस दिस इज नॉट द सेम एज द वेरिएंस ऑफ एक्स बार वेरिएंस ऑफ एक्स बार is the variance of this random variable that we called sample mean sample variance kuch aur cheez thi sample variance kya cheez thi sample variance in fact if you look at this if you if you look at the variance of x bar this is a constant this is a constant which is sigma square over n okay if you find the sample variance we had defined the sample variance s square to be equal to 1 over n minus 1 summation i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar where x bar is the sample mean whole square now you will notice that since x bar is a random variable s square is also a function of a random variable so itself s square would be a random variable okay and we saw last time that the expected value of s square expected value of s square while the variance of x bar is constant is constant okay s square is not a constant it's a random variable and if it's a random variable it, it will have an expected value and a variance okay and the expected value of s square would be equal to would turn out to be equal to sigma square so isliye if you notice ke expected value of expected value of x bar jo hai 
वो आपके पास म्यू आ जाती है पॉपुलेशन मीन एंड एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एस स्क्वायर सिग्मा स्क्वायर आ जाती है पॉपुलेशन वेरियंस ठीक है सो दिस इज पॉपुलेशन मीन दिस इज पॉपुलेशन मीन एंड दिस इज पॉपुलेशन वेरियंस सो एक्स बार को हम कहते हैं एक्स बार इज एन एस्टिमेटर अनबायस्ड एस्टिमेटर ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन मीन Similarly, S square, which is the sample variance, उसको हम कहते हैं कि it's an unbiased estimator of the population variance. ठीक है? So now, since since x bar is a random variable, it has an expected value. It has a variance as well. वो हमने निकाल भी लिए यहाँ पे. Similarly, S square, which is a random variable, it also has a mean, which turns out to be equal to sigma square. It will have a variance, which we will skip. वो किसी और course में पढ़ेंगे. <clears throat> now <coughs> one more thing that we defined was humne notice kiya tha ki covariance of 10x and y was equal to 10 times covariance of x and y so there was no normalization of the magnitude of the covariance so you similarly covariance of 5000x and y would be equal to 5000 times the covariance of x and y so covariance jo hai wo kitni bhi badi ho sakti hai depending upon this but we are interested in you know 5000 x is really if you know x you know 5000 x there is there is no new information that you will get from 5000 x agar main aapko x bata dun to aap mujhe 5000 x bhi bata denge aap 10000 x bhi bata denge if i tell you x okay so but i am interested in i am interested in the information which is mutually contained which between x and y okay if there is no mutual information contained between x and y then they will be they will be independent they will have a covariance of zero okay but um you know i don't care whether it is 5000 x and y or 10 x or y or just x and y i just want to be make to be make sure that i find the mutual information between x and y how x impacts y okay so for that we had defined correlation which is just the normalized covariance so correlation between x and y is nothing is nothing but the covariance between x and y divided by square root of variance of x and variance of y which of course was a simplified form of the covariance between x divided by variance of x comma y divided by square root of variance of y okay now let me ask you this question ke ye jo x divided by variance of x hai x divided by variance of x variance of x is a constant okay so x divided by variance of x variance of x is a constant so what would be the variance of this guy this is a random variable this is a random variable what would be this answers in the chat window answers in the chat window there are only three people here koi bata sakta hai well this would be equal to ye constant hai to ye 1 over square root of variance of x ka square aayega or variance of x आ जाएगी विच इज वन ये हमने बेसिकली x और y को नॉर्मलाइज कर दिया है और नॉर्मलाइज करने से इनकी वेरियंस आपस में वो वेरियंस वन बन गई है वेरियंस वन हो गई है सो वन मोर थिंग दैट वी कवर वॉज दैट द को रिलेशन बिटवीन एक्स एंड वाई को रिलेशन नॉट द को वेरियंस While the covariance did not have any limit, वो पांच सौ पांच हजार डाल देंगे तो पांच हजार से मल्टीप्लाई हो जाएगी, दस डाल देंगे तो दस से मल्टीप्लाई हो जाएगी. The correlation between x and y, the correlation between x and y, any x and any y, any x and any y, was limited between minus one and plus one. These are the one का मतलब है कि perfect correlation है. Minus one का भी मतलब है कि perfect correlation है. One increases and the other decreases. So um, so x and y if if 
y is equal to a plus b x, which means a linear function, linear relationship between x and y, linear relationship between x and y. In that case, in that case, the correlation between x and y would be equal to plus one or minus one, plus one or minus one, depending on b, depending upon b. Okay, so if b is greater than zero, then it's plus one. If b is less than zero, then it is minus one. If b is equal to zero, then y is not a random variable. Then y is a constant. Okay, and there is no correlation between a constant and a random variable. Okay. That's great. Then we, then we went to the last time when we started um, with the topic of conditional expectation. Conditional, conditional expectation. And I'm going to talk about this question that we did last time is maybe maybe I should choose a different one. Oh, the last time I'm not Let's see if I have a different question here. So let's say, let's say you, you send emails to various people. Send emails to various people. Some people can be within lums, some people can be outside lums, but within Pakistan, and some people can be outside Pakistan. So there are three possibilities, three possibilities, okay? So, so you can send an email, the destination of your email, the destination of your email, it could be lums or it could be outside lums, but in Pakistan and it could be outside Pakistan. All the emails that are sent, okay, all the emails that are sent are sent in these three categories, okay? In these three categories. And let's say that the probability you send an email to LUMS, 50% of your emails are sent to LUMS. 30% of your emails are sent to someone in Pakistan, but outside LUMS. And 20% of your emails are sent outside Pakistan, okay? And let's say the average sending time, average sending time if you send an email within lums, is 0 0.05 seconds. Yeah, in seconds. This is in seconds. And if it is sent outside lums, if it is sent outside lums, but within Pakistan, then this is 0 0.10 seconds. And if you send the email to outside Pakistan, to or 0.30 seconds. Okay. Now, let me, let me ask you this question. Let's define a random variable. Y is equal to one, two, or three. And Y is one if you send email to lumps. Is two if you send email to outside lumps, but in PK. Okay. And Y takes a value three when you send an email outside PK. 
outside Pakistan. So what is the probability y takes a value 1? So y takes a value of 1 with probability 0. 0.5, with probability 0. 0.5, y takes a value 2 with probability 0. 0.3, and y takes a value 3 with probability 0. 0.2. Okay. I can ask you to find the expected value of y, and you can easily find the expected value of y. <laughs> but that is not what I am interested in. That is not what I am interested in. Okay. I am interested in expected value of x given y is equal to 1. Expected value of x given y is equal to 1. Now, this is given to you. This is actually given to you. What is the expected value of x given y is equal to 1? We see that this is 0 0.05 because this is the average sending time already expected value given y is equal to 1 means that you are sending the email to lambs. So expected value of x given y is equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.05. Last time we had a question, we didn't have any values. We had only the joint probability mass function. Diya hua tha. But you could still find the conditional expectation. This is called, this is called conditional expectation. Conditional expectation. Similarly, expected value of x given y is equal to 2 is equal to 0 0.10 and expected value of x given y is equal to 3 is equal to 0 0.30. Now, you might notice that the expected value of x given y, so I don't tell you what value y is taking. Expect, expected value of x given y is a random variable, is a random variable. Why this is a random variable? Because, because this is a random variable because it takes values 0 0.05 or 0 0.10 or 0 0.30 depending upon what value y is taking, depending upon what value y is taking. Okay? So the expected value of x given y is equal to 1 is 0 0.05, is 0 0.05. Okay? So um, this guy is a random variable. So I may be able to write, I may be able to write its PMF. It's a probability mass function. So expected value of x given y curve probability mass function. This probability mass function is equal to 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.30. Okay. With what probability takes a value 0 0.05 when y takes a value 1? With probability, with probability 0 0.5. And this with probability 0 0.3 and this with probability 0 0.2. This is the PMF. This is the PMF of expected value of, of x given y. K is random variable ka PMF. Hai. So if it, this is a random variable whose PMF is given, I can try to find the expected value of this guy. Expected value of this random variable. Okay. Which turns out to be, which turns out to be 0 0.05 into 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 into 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 into 0 0.2. Okay. And this would be 0.115. And I ask you this question. What is this value? What is this value? The claim is, the claim is, okay, this quantity here, we know that expected value of x given y is a random variable. And if I take the expected value of that random variable, this, the claim is, okay, this is equal to expected value of x. The claim is that this is equal to expected value of x. And there is a very little proof of that. And the little proof is, I will do the proof here. Okay. And we will do it for the continuous case, but you can easily do it for the, uh, we'll do it for the discrete case. You can easily do it for the continuous case as well. Okay. So expected value of, expected value of 
x given y double expectation is equal to this outside expected value is with respect to y. See, these were the probabilities that y was taking value 1, y was taking value 2, y was taking value 3. So this is going to be equal to summation over y. Okay? Summation over y. And think of this as some function of y. Some function of y. So how do you calculate the expected value of g of y? The way that you calculate the expected value of a function of a random variable is summation over all y, summation over all y, g of small y into p y of y. p y of y is the probability that capital Y takes a value small y. Okay. So, on by the same token, this would be equal to g of capital Y is this guy expected value of x given y. So, g of small y would be equal to the expected value of x given y is equal to small y. Given y is equal to small y multiplied by p y y multiplied by p y y, which is which is this guy. Okay. So I am going to erase this here. Is <coughs> Okay. So this is going to be um this would be equal to summation over y into p by y what is expected value of x given y is equal to y this can this is the expected value of x so must be summed over all x summed over all x x into the probability that x takes the value x, given that y takes the value y. So x given y. Okay. So this would turn out to be, this would turn out to be summation upon y, summation upon x, p y y, p x given y, x given y. And what is this quantity here? So if you remember, this is p y y multiplied by this guy is p x y x comma y divided by p y y. Where did this x go? This x has to be here. So this guy cancels out with this guy. So all you are left with is summation upon y, summation upon x, x p x y x comma y p x y x comma y now this order of summation can be changed summation upon y p x y x comma y okay and if you sum up the joint function, probability mass function over y, all you are left with is the probability, the marginal probability mass function of x, which is really expected value of x. So easily done. Okay. Now, if you look at the notes, it's done in just two steps. But if you look at the notes, it, this is done in just two steps. Just two steps. So now that now that we have this information, we can do a few examples. We can do a few examples, and this is an example that we have seen before, but we are looking going to look at it from a new perspective. And this is a joint PDF: f x y x comma y is equal to e to the minus x over y e to the minus y divided by y and x going from zero to infinity, and y also going from zero to infinity. Are x and y independent? No, because we have we cannot separate out the x, y terms. Okay? So let's try to find expected value of x given y is equal to y. Okay? In fact, 
I'm not interested in this. The real thing that I'm interested in is, is this. The real thing I'm interested in, interested in expected value of x, in expected value of x, okay? For that, for that, what we can do is, I can find the marginal density function of x here. I can find the marginal density function of x by integrating out y. That won't be easy. That won't be easy. Integrating out y from this expression won't be easy. And finding the marginal of x will also not be easy. But, but let's say if you find the marginal of x, then once you have that probability density function, marginal density function of x, you can find the expectation of x. We know the, the basic way of, of doing that. Okay. However, I want to take a shortcut here. Okay. I want to take a shortcut here. Okay. And and I re realize that expected value of x is nothing but is this is expected value of x given y. Expected value of expected value of x given y. There's double expectation here. Okay. Now, so let's try to find this out. This is a function of y. Let's find, let's find expected value of x given y. Okay. For this, let's first find. Let's first find expected value of x given y is equal to small y. And then I will just remove small y from there and replace it with a capital Y so that it will become a function of capital Y. Okay. So let's first find this guy. Expected value of x given y is equal to y. For this, for this, I need the conditional density function of x given y. Okay. Now that I can easily find. Now that I can easily find, and we did find that in one of the homework problems, in one of the class examples, you know, we did find that. Why? Because we know that f of x given y, x given y is equal to f x y, x y, which is given to us by the way, divided by f y of y, which is the marginal of y. Okay. So we will need to find the marginal of y. But it turns out that while the finding the marginal of x was too difficult from this expression, finding the marginal of y is not, to, not so difficult. Just by looking at this, just by looking at this, it turns out that y is so far away. And if you integrate it uh, with respect to y, that is going to be a nightmare. Okay? But integrating it with respect to x is a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. How? f y of y is equal to integral over all x going from 0 to infinity, x going from 0 to infinity, this would be equal to e to the minus, e to the minus x over y, e to the minus y divided by y, dx. Okay. Yeh dy pe agar karte, see, our main purpose was to find the expected value of x. And we know that if we know the marginal of x, we can find the expected value of x. But finding the marginal of x is not easy. Finding the marginal of y is easy. Okay. Finding the marginal of y is easy. If you know the marginal of y, then given this information, which is given to us, the joint density, I can find the conditional of x given y. If I can find the conditional of x given y, I can find the expected value of x given y. So whatever that comes out to be, if I take the expectation of that, I will be done. I will be done. Okay. I would not still have found the probability density function of x, the marginal density function of x, but I would be able to find the expected value of x. Okay. How is that? How is that possible? So realize that, realize that integral zero to infinity, integral zero to infinity, sorry, zero to infinity, lambda e to the minus lambda x dx, this should be equal to one. Why? Because this is an exponential density function. So I re realize that this is nothing but yeah, e to the minus y is the constant here. So I can put this e to the minus y here. And then what you are left with is x going from 0 to infinity, 1 over y e to the minus 1 over y x dx, which, you know, is the same as this, e minus y into 1, which is e minus y. Okay. Now, if f by y is given, is found, then 
the conditional of x given y would be equal to the ratio of these two guys, the joint divided by the marginal. And the joint is given to us as this guy. Joint to the other. This is the joint which is given to us. And this is the marginal that we found. Take the ratio of these two, you will be, you will end up with e to the minus x over y. Okay. X is greater than zero, y is greater than zero. And of course, less than infinity, less than infinity. Okay. So given by the probability density function of x is just an exponential. So we realize then x given y is equal to small y is nothing, is nothing but exponential with parameter one over y. Hence, x given y is exponential with parameter one over capital Y. Okay, so expected value of this is not a very good way of writing it, but um, expected value of x given y is equal to y is really equal to, so I'm going to erase this. This is not, uh, while this makes sense, but mathematically not, not rigorous enough. So from this, I will write expected value of x given y is equal to y, which is this random variable. This is this, uh, this guy here, x given y is equal to y is simply is simply an exponential with parameter y. So the expected value is one over one over y, which is equal to y. Okay. Hence, we can write that expected value of x given y is equal to capital Y. Okay. And now expected value of x is equal to expected value of expected value of x given y, which is equal to expected value of you know, this thing inside is simply y, which is equal to. Now, if you look at this, the density function of y, this is e to the minus y, zero y infinity. This is an exponential density function with parameter one, with lambda is equal to one, okay? So what would be the expected value of y, which is one, and we're done, okay? Expected value of x so this process might seem longer, but this is extremely simple, extremely simple. Very easily you can find the expected value by conditioning. This is called finding expectations by conditioning. Finding expectations by conditioning. Okay. There is a, a couple of other examples, um, you know, you, which are provided in the notes. Please make sure that you take a look at those. I'm going to do one example, which is uh, also done in the book, but we are going to do it in a different way. So there is this example in the book, which is 5A in book, okay? And in this, we have two random variables, X and Y, X is binomial and P and Y is also binomial and P. And they are both independent as well. Independent as well. So I am interested in expected value of X given X plus Y is equal to M. Okay. Now, in order to find this, what the book has done is, in the book, they have done is they have tried to find the, the density function of X, in fact, the probability mass function of X, because X is a discrete random variable, the probability mass function of X, given X plus Y is equal to M, given X plus Y is equal to M. So in the book, in the book, what they do is find the, conditional PMF of X given X plus Y is equal to M. Conditional PMF ha gaya. Conditional PMF aane ke baad uski expected value lenge. So you will be done. But obviously you will need to 
you know tinker with the with the probability mass function of of the binomial distribution and choose i uh, p power i 1 minus p n minus i and do some manipulation not too difficult not too difficult but still you have to do some 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 calculation some computations you know uh, arrangement of variables etc okay but i am going to use a trick here and the trick is and the trick is that think of this you know expected value of x given x plus y is equal to m plus expected value of y given x plus y is equal to m ye kahan se aa gaya dekhen humne ye cheez find karni thi we only had to find this this guy here ye x value expected value of x given x plus y is equal to m ye maine aise dummy khud se likh liya theek hai so let's try to find it what what these two guys are so since the expectations are linear since the expectations are linear this would be equal to expected value of x plus y given x plus y is equal to m okay now now i ask you this question what would be the expected value of something given given that something that something is equal to something else <laughs> so so this this really is 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 m this is this is x now what i am going to do here is this guy here and this guy here okay both of these since x and y are both binomial np both of them are binomial np okay both of them are symmetric both of them are symmetric by the symmetry of these two guys i can write this this as 2 times expected value of x given x plus y is equal to m okay which we have found out to be equal to m which gives us expected value of x given x plus y is equal to m is equal to m over 2 and done kitni easy trick hai okay so very very simple trick now i am going to do another example jiske andar bhi ek trick istemal hoti hai and that trick is again conditioning um, will help find you the expectation okay this is about a miner mine mein jo kaam karte hain log uh, miner which is trapped in a mine trapped in in a mine okay. and when the miner is trapped in a mine there are three doors which can lead to safety which can lead lead to safety okay so door 1 door 1 okay door 1 will lead to safety ek tunnel aayegi and it will lead to safety in 3 hours in 3 hours door 2 it will tunnel will return to a tunnel will return to टनल के अंदर और उसके बाद जो है वो वापस आ जाएंगे उसी जगह पे सो बट दैट मीन इज Okay, the only way, the only way that the miner can reach safety is if the miner selects door one. लेकिन उसको पहले से पता नहीं है. लेकिन उसको पहले से पता नहीं है. So, if the miner chooses, if the miner chooses, each door equally likely. ठीक है वन थर्ड प्रोबेबिलिटी डोर वन वन थर्ड प्रोबेबिलिटी डोर टू वन थर्ड प्रोबेबिलिटी डोर थ्री ओके एंड 
x is the time to return to safety. Find expected value of x. Find expected value of x. Okay. So once again, I will use this expected value of x would be equal to expected value of expected value of x given y. और यहाँ पे y क्या है? अभी y हमने बताया नहीं. Okay. So y is y is equal to door one, door two, or door three. This is door one or door two or door three. So y will take these three values. Y will take these three values, and the probability that y takes the value one is the same as the probability y takes the value two is the same as the probability that y takes the value three is one third. Is one third. This is the PMF of y. PMF of y. Or PMF of y. If we know, then it's easy to find this quantity here. If you can find the expected value of x given y. Okay. So what is the expected value of x given y? So let's let's try to find out expected value of x given y is equal to one. What is the expected value of x given y is equal to one? Anyone willing to answer? Abdullah and Swaliha, what is the expected value yeah. of x given y is equal to one? So three. Three, it's three. It's three. Okay. X is the time to return to safety. X is the time to return to safety. अगर आप पहला डोर ले लेते हैं तो तीन घंटे में आप बाहर निकल जाएंगे. And this is deterministic. So the expected value of x given that y is equal to one is equal to three. What is expected value of x given y is equal to two? What is the expected value of x given y is equal to two? Five. Well, not quite, not quite. They can five to hours. Usko lagenge, but in five hours, me, wo safety pe nahi jayega. Wo dobara se square one pe aajega. Usi jagah pe aake khada ho jayega, jahan pe phir teen darwaze uske samne. You won't go to safety. You won't go to safety. So you will waste five hours. You will waste five hours, and then you are, you are at the same place. You are at the same place. And you are at the same place means now it will take you an expected value of time to reach to safety. Jitna bhi lagna tha time. ठीक है. Similarly, similarly expected value of x given y is equal to three is seven plus expected value of x. So this is this is your expected value of x given y. This is a random variable. This takes a value three with probability one over three. Takes this value with probability one over three. Takes this value with probability one over three. So expected value of x is equal to expected value of expected value of x given y, which is three with probability one over three. Then one over three के साथ five plus expected value of x. Then one over three के साथ seven plus expected value of And now this can be solved as one over three, के साथ three plus five plus seven, which is fifteen plus two times expected value of x. Okay. This is equal to expected value of x. So three times expected value of x is equal to fifteen plus two times expected value of x, which means the expected value of x is equal to Fifteen. Intuitively, ठीक भी लग रहा है. Intuitively, ठीक भी लग रहा है हमें. ये three तो आपको लगने ही लगने हैं. फिर one third chance है कि पांच आप और extra लगा देंगे. फिर seven और extra लगा देंगे and etc. Okay. So this is uh, this is great. This is great. Now I am going to talk about an example which I will not solve here in class, but its uh, solution is is given in the book as well as in the notes. 
and this is about the game of craps game of craps if you go to vegas then the, there are these gambling tables and you roll these pair of dice and based on the what number shows up you either win or you lose okay um it turns out that the chances of winning and losing are very close to 0.5 very close to 0.5 in fact the chances of winning are slightly very slightly less than 0.5 and chances of of losing are slightly more than 0.5 so that means if there is a large number of players which are playing then on average the house will be or the or the or the gam gambling uh, you know place will be will be winning with slightly more probability so the expected value that they will on average win the money and um, is slightly more slightly more averaged over all the gamblers who come there okay so um, please take a take a look at that solution is provided provided in book and notes okay so make sure you take a look at that okay and that that uh, solution also uses uses finding expectations finding expectations ye jaise upar humne mining wale maloom kiya expectation by conditioning by conditioning finding expectations by condition okay. now i am going to make a claim and i will prove that by using an example so the claim is first of all okay if you have if you have a random variable n random variable n taking values taking value 0 1 2 and so on okay and x1 x2 dot 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 up to x capital n okay now n is a random variable and these random variables which are i i d independent identically distributed how many of these are there well the number of these random variables is itself random kitne random variables it depends upon ke what value n is taken okay with expected values finite n and expected value of i finite then the expected value of i is equal to 1 to capital n x i is equal to expected value of n into expected value of kisi ek x ko le le because they are iid they will all have the same expected value okay ye hamara claim hai ye hamara claim hai and we will show this by using an example by using an example and the example is okay um you know in the in electronics um we use a lot of uh, A lot of these integrated circuits or chips, uh, in, in in other words, silicon chips, silicon chips. Your microprocessor working on your in your in your desktop or laptop or your cell phone, smartphone, um, is a is a silicon chip. Okay, um, and these silicon chips are in the form of a wafer. So, this is a wafer. And this wafer, on which you have flaws, can be found. इसके ऊपर फ्लॉज आ सकते हैं दीज आर अनवांटेड पोर्शन ऑफ द पेपर सो दीज फ्लॉज कैन बी यू नो हियर एक क्लस्टर में होंगे एक ये फ्लॉ होगा आपके पास फिर एक इस तरह का फ्लॉ इधर होगा सो सिलिकॉन चिप सिलिकॉन चिप पेपर ओके सो फ्लॉज अकर on the wafer ke wafer ke upar flaws occur karte hain in the form of in the form of clusters ye defects hain aap samajh lo theek hai so the number of clusters the number of clusters is a poisson random variable with parameter lambda and the number of flaws per cluster 
ये भी फिक्स नहीं होते ये एक और पोस्टोन रैंडम वेरिएबल है विच इज विद पैरामीटर म्यू ठीक है सो एंड डिफरेंट क्लस्टर्स आर इंडिपेंडेंट डिफरेंट क्लस्टर्स डिफरेंट क्लस्टर्स आर इंडिपेंडेंट different clusters are independent okay. find the total number of of flaws in fact expected value of that find expected number of flaws ऑन द वेफर टोटल जितने भी फ्लॉ होते हैं आपके पास वेफर के ऊपर वो फाइंड आउट करना है सो सबसे पहले हम इसमें मॉडल करते हैं सोल्यूशन सबसे पहले लेट वाई इज द नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स एंड वी आर गिवन दैट वाई इज पोसोन विद पैरामीटर लैमडा लेट एक्स आई इज नंबर ऑफ फ्लॉज इन आई एथ क्लस्टर in ith cluster and we are given that by xi is poisson with parameter mu okay. so anyone recall uh, swalia or abdullah do you recall what's the expected value of a poisson expected value of a poisson is and well poisson lambda ki expected value is lambda the variance of of a poisson lambda is also lambda theek hai isi tarah poisson mu jo hai uski expected value is mu and the variance of that is also mu okay mean or variance dono barabar hote hain unke <coughs> so note that these xi note that xi is r i i d also independent of independent of n ye n se bhi independent and of course independent from each other as well okay now z is defined as summation i is equal to 1 to y where y is not a constant y is a random variable it is very important to realize that y is a random variable it's the total number of flaws total number of flaws on the wafer and this is a function of function of y and x1 x2 etc so on up to xy okay now i am interested in find the expected value of the number of flaws on the wafer humne humne ye find karna tha so quantity of interest quantity of interest is is expected value of z how do i find the expected value of z okay and we try the standard procedure we try the standard procedure that expected value of z is equal to expected value of expected value of z given something let's let's try by let's try by okay so this is equal to this is equal to expected value of expected value of z given y but z is summation i is equal to 1 to y x i given y given y this whole thing given y this whole thing given y now i can i can run the linearity of expectation but i don't know how many xi is i am adding since i don't know how many xi is i am adding so we can write this as we can write this as expected value of the remember that this guy here this guy here is a function of y this is a function of y is a function of y
अगर ये y इसमें कैपिटल y ना होता कोई कांस्टेंट होता तो मेरे पास ये एक रैंडम वेरिएबल ना होता ये मेरे पास एक कांस्टेंट ही आ जाता ये कांस्टेंट आ जाता मेरे पास बट नाउ आई हैव अ रैंडम वेरिएबल व्हिच इज व्हिच इज y इट्स व्हिच इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन y इट्स सो दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ नाउ um this is a function of y g y now i am going to write that again jo maine pehle likha tha so i am interested in finding expected value of g of y so how do you find expected value of g of y um the way to find it is g of small y okay p y y That's how, that's how you find it. So, ये आपका साइड नोट है इसको जहन में रखना है एंड दिस गाय इज जी ऑफ वाई जी ऑफ वाई लेकिन यहां पर समेशन में हमें जी ऑफ स्मॉल वाई लिखना पड़ता है सो एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ जी विल टर्न आउट टू बी इक्वल टू विल टर्न आउट टू बी इक्वल टू एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ दिस जी ऑफ वाई विच इज is expected value of let me let me do a little bit of manipulation here this would be equal to expected value of summation i is equal to 1 to small y x i given y is equal to small y into the probability into the probability that y is equal to small y in fact ye expected value nahi honi chahiye ye sum hona chahiye should be summed over all y so this would be equal to summed over all y expected value of now each of these xi's are independent of of this guy okay and now the summation is also not on a random variable the summation is on a single guy so this would be equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to y expected value of x i i will drop the y here why i can drop the y the reason that i can drop the y is because <clears throat> is because this xi is independent of this y is equal to y okay so expected value of xi into probability y is equal to y ये सारी समेशन ओके सो दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स आई द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स आई आई इज इक्वल टू वन टू वाई द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स आई सी ईच ऑफ दिस एक्स आई इज पोसोन म्यू सो एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स आई इज नथिंग बट म्यू ओके इनटू द प्रोबेबिलिटी वाई इज इक्वल टू वाई ओके सो दिस इज इक्वल टू Why, and then um, this guy here is mu times added over. Okay, so mu times small y into probability y is equal to y. This is nothing but mu times summation upon y y into probability y is equal to y. So this is mu times expected value of y. So mu times what is expected value of y? 
expected value of y is just lambda, a times lambda. Okay. So this is this turns out to be expected value of y into expected value of x one or x two or x three either 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 of those which is the same as ये जो हमने claim ऊपर किया था जो हमने claim किया था expected value of n multiplied by n times summation करनी है हमने तो this would be expected value of n multiplied by expected value of x i similarly here y times हमने summation करनी है so this would be expected value of i uh, y multiplied by expected value of, of x i okay so i'm going to talk about um we only have a couple of minutes left so maybe let me see what i can do in the couple of minutes is okay i'll do one more example ek example kar lete conditional variance humne karni hai but we will do it next time we'll do it next time so let's say we are interested in um in finding the variance of x variance of x to be found where x is geometric ye humne chapter 4 mein find out kiya Try to find this. Try to find this by condition. By condition. Geometric. If you recall, क्या था कि keep trial, keep keep doing the trials with probability p you have success, with probability one minus p you have failure. Okay, and keep doing the trial until you see the first success. And x is the number of trials until you see the first success. X is the number of trials until first success okay and we found out we had found out earlier that expected value of x was equal to 1 over p ye humne nikala hua hai variance of x nikal pe variance of x we know that is expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square So expected value of x ये तो हमें पता है, we know this already. What is this guy? Expected value of x square. Let's try to find that out. So expected value of x square, expected value of x square is equal to expected value of expected value of. See, if x is a random variable, x square is also a random variable. So this would be x square given y square given y. And what is y here? y y kya cheez hai so where y is equal to is a random variable if first trial is success so humne kya kiya pehle trial ki jo outcome thi uski outcome ke upar humne isko condition kar diya is zero otherwise agar failure ho gaya pehle usme theek hai so probability that y takes the value 1 is p and probability y takes the value 0 is obviously 1 minus p ye humne aise ek y ko define kiya aur jo bhi pehle trial ki jo outcome thi uske upar humne whether it was success or a failure uske upar humne condition kar diya x so isko upar condition karne se let's see ke if i can find expected value of x square by doing this okay? if i can find that then by using this other equation ye jo pehle wali equation hai i will be able to find the variance okay so expected value of x square is equal to expected value of expected value of x square given y okay this is equal to now what is this expected value of x square given y this would be equal to expected value of x square given y is equal to given y is equal to 1 into the probability that y is equal to 1 plus expected value of x square given y is equal to 0 into the probability y is equal to 0 
तो ये हमने क्या किया ये हमने बेसिकली जो है ये वही चीज लिखी है कि समेशन अपॉन ऑल वाई एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स स्क्वेर गिवन वाई इज इक्वल टू वाई एंड पी वाई वाई सेम सेम थिंग और कुछ भी नहीं है इसमें So, what is expected value of x square given y is equal to one? Y is equal to one का मतलब है कि पहली बारी में success आ गई। अगर पहली बारी में success आ गई, तो what is x? X is the number of trials until the first success. X is the number of trials until first success. अगर मैंने आपको बता दिया कि पहली बारी में success आ गई है, तो x will be equal to one and x square will also be equal to one. Okay? So this would be one into probability y is equal to one. Probability y is equal to one is simply p plus expected value of x square given y is equal to zero. अगर y is equal to zero, if I tell you that the first trial is is a failure, ठीक है? तो पहला trial करने के बाद आपने क्या किया? एक trial जाया हो गया. अब आप वहीं पे खड़े हैं जहाँ उस trial से पहले खड़े थे. So that means this will be equal to one plus x, one plus x whole square is the expected value. इसकी एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो व्हिच इज वन माइनस पी वन माइनस पी सो दिस इज योर एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर तो इसको अगर सॉल्व करें थोड़ा सा तो दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू पी प्लस एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ वन प्लस एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस टू एक्स इनटू � plus 1 minus p into expected value of x square plus 2x. So these two guys cancel out. This will be equal to 1 plus 1 minus p expected value of x square plus 2 times 1 minus p expected value of x, which is 1 over p. We have already got it, 1 over p. Expected value of x was 1 over p. Mean. Okay. So this gives us, this gives us, solve current score. Solve for expected value of x square. This will give you solve current. Equation ke dono side on ke upar aar hai. So you can easily solve for this. And you will see that expected value of x square will turn out to be equal to 2 minus p over p square. Okay. Then variance of x would be equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square, which is equal to 2 minus p over p square minus 1 over p whole square. So this would be equal to 1 minus p over p square. And if you recall, this was what the variance of a geometric random variable with parameter p was. We have already removed it before, and this is what it is. So, so the, but, but the moral is that some you know, some of the expected values that we wanted to calculate, we can easily calculate those if we condition on something. What would you want to condition on? That is something which comes from practice. ये practice से आती है कि किस चीज के ऊपर condition करना है। तो तो हमने पहले पहले event पहला trial जो था उसकी outcome के ऊपर हमने यहाँ पे condition कर दिया and we are done. इसी तरह हमने ये number of clusters जो है इसके ऊपर condition कर दिया we are done. यहाँ पर इससे पहले हमने जो सवाल किए इसमें ये minor जो है वो किस door से जाएगा? You know पहली दफा जो वो door लेते हैं हमने उसके ऊपर condition कर दिया and then we are done. So first time जो जो भी वो so, इसी तरह से इसी तरह से you know ये पहले हमारे पास ये continuous random variables वाला सवाल था इसमें we conditioned on y because it was easier to find the 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 marginal PDF of y difficult to find the marginal PDF of x although I was interested in expected value of x so I used condition conditioned upon y conditioning को use करके हमने answer निकाल लिया इसका so with some practice you will you will see के कि things you know start getting in place पता चलता जाता है कि 
कि कौन सा वाला मेथड इस्तेमाल करना चाहिए कंडीशनिंग ऑन द आउटकम ऑफ द सेकेंड ट्रायल मीन के वाई की जगह पे मैं जी ले लेता विच इज द आउटकम ऑफ द सेकेंड ट्रायल इज इक्वल टू वन देन प्रोबेबिलिटी जी इज इक्वल टू वन विल बी डिपेंडेंट अपॉन वट है ऑन द फर्स्ट ट्रायल ओके सो द सेकेंड ट्रायल द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ द सेकेंड ट्रायल इट सेल्फ इज डिपेंडेंट अपॉन वट है ऑन द फर्स्ट ट्रायल सो सो दैट मीन्स के इन दिस केस इफ यू कंडीशन ऑन द सेकेंड ट्रायल यू विल नीड टू go back to the first trial anyway okay or um, you know it would not be easy it would not be easy to to take that into account you can probably do that you know it might complicate the the maths here but you will end up getting the same answer perhaps or maybe you will get stuck uh, but the answer should be the same so in this case first trial is something iske upar hum easily keh sakte hain ki pehle trial pe karke dekhte hain whatever you get um if you win on the first trial then you stop there and then you know the expected value of x square the number of trials that you will get there is just one because you won on the first trial pehle trial ke upar hi success aa gayi okay and then the expected value of the number of trials would be one more than the expected value one more than the expected value ye yeah, one more than the expected value if the first trial is a failure but what that means is ke first trial agar failure aa gaya to aap जो भी आपका आंसर आना था उसमें आपने एक खामा खा में ऐड कर दिया ठीक है बिकॉज आफ्टर द फर्स्ट फेल्ड ट्रायल यू आर स्टैंडिंग इन द सेम पोजीशन वेयर यू वर बिफोर द फर्स्ट ट्रायल सो वन इज गेट्स एडेड टू गेट्स एडेड टू द टू द एक्स हियर ओके गॉट इट थैंक यू सर ओके ऑल राइट एनी एनी अदर क्वेश्चन any other question all right so i'm going to uh, stop the session terminate the session and we'll upload the video whenever it becomes available okay thank you khudafiz